Montfort, and this is the Diana Montfort Show. My guest is the one and only Quentin Crisp, performer, author, gay rights activist, and early pioneer. Welcome to the show. Well, tell us now, have you been, now this is a cliché question, but have you been homosexual all your life? Oh, yes. There was never any decision to be made. I was a hopeless case from the day I was born. Well, what do you mean hopeless? Do you mean obviously effeminate or...? Obviously a misfit, obviously effeminate. By the time I was six years old, I was waltzing around the house in clothes belonging to my mother or my grandmother that I'd found in an attic saying, uh, today I am a beautiful princess. I mean, what my parents thought, I can't imagine. Were they worried about you, did they? Well, my father went on as though nothing terrible had happened, but that was his way of dealing with everything. My mother, of course, was frightened for my sake. She alternately threatened me with the world and shielded me from it and she was worried as to whether I would ever stay alive. And of course, when I saw the world, so was I. Mm -hmm. How have you stayed alive all these years? Well, it is amazing. I can remember when I was much younger, people used to say things like, <clears throat> we never thought you'd live through the winter. And this was nice. I felt frail, helpless, mm -hmm. and, but in fact, Having a frail physique mm -hmm. has nothing to do with having a, a frail constitution. Mm -hmm. So that though I've always been a puny, shrimp-like person, mm -hmm. um, I seem to survive more or less everything. Mm -hmm. To what do you attribute your survival? Because I know that uh, in London, where you come from, you uh, were for a long time despised by many, many people. You swam upstream. You just uh, would not join the majority, could not. What do you think accounts for your amazing survival? How did you keep alive, keep from having people bash you, kill you? Or well, I couldn't keep people from bashing me. That was impossible. But I never defended myself. That was I, something I knew by instinct. If I had fought back, I would have been killed. Mm -hmm. Because you're not attacked in England by one person, always by at least two, usually by a crowd. And if you hit somebody, then you would really be finished. Did you ever think of carrying, say, a gun or something to protect you? Well, I didn't. And you've got to learn to use a gun and to maintain a gun. You're never shown this when you see American television. The housewife is able to put her hand in a drawer when she hears the cruel padded feet on the stairs, and she takes out a gun. You don't see her load it. You don't see her use the safety catch. She just fires it, and she fires it right. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you've got to learn to use a gun and learn how to keep it and where to keep it. No, I could never have bought a gun to start with because I was on the fringe of existence. You say that you didn't choose to be on the fringe, that you were always, as you put it, your word, not mine, a so-called misfit. That's right. Do you see some kind of reason, taking the long view of your life? Is there some reason why that... And no, I can offer no reason. I had two brothers and a sister brought up by the same parents, in the same house, in the same way. Mm -hmm. And they are just like human beings. It's only I who was a hopeless case. Well, now, you once said, quote, every heterosexual, no matter how low, is superior to every homosexual, no matter how noble. Do you really believe that? Well, they rule the world. You have to accept this. The world belongs to them. So anyone who goes against the majority... Will lose. I see. Well, but there are more women than men 
But somehow men manage to rule the world. That's a phenomenon. Women are the persecuted majority. Mm -hmm. And this I cannot explain, but um, perhaps they're not in other civilizations, of course, we only know our own. Mm -hmm. But certainly in America, of course, women are greatly admired and are looked after. In England, uh, the English do not really like women. Well, the French Prime Minister, for example, maintains that most Englishmen are closeted homosexuals. Do you believe that? Well, no, this is not true. This is a misunderstanding. The English uh, upper middle class mm -hmm. and the aristocracy is dandified. Mm -hmm. This doesn't mean to them or to other English people that they are effeminate. They wear bowler hats with curly brims mm -hmm. and they have furled umbrellas and they have handkerchiefs hanging out of their sleeves. This doesn't mean that they are hoping to attract other men. What does it mean? It means that they think of themselves as civilized. Mm -hmm. You see, there isn't much room in England for the very manly uh, image that the people in the Far West and even the Middle West have, have adopted. Mm -hmm. Nobody could carry on like ja John Wayne in England. Where would he carry on like that? Or in the U.S. He would be a, a sociopath, wouldn't he? <laughs> But shooting people just but them. yeah the idea well of course n americans long to shoot everybody i mean nothing will make them give up being able to get a gun so easily excuse me mr chris and we'll be right back whoa look at tommy he's so stoned this is totally happening look what's happened to him you know what i look like such a mess what a loser yeah this weed is definitely gross. Ever since he started smoking pot, he's gross. Like everyone's doing it. And it's so uncool. They're really into me. They think I'm so... Out of it. He's really out of it. After my dad made it clear that biology was more important than baseball, I made my decision. But I missed the 845 to Springfield that day and was starting to think running away wasn't such a great idea after all. And I saw him. Whistle stop Willie. Rumor had it he was born in a boxcar and spent most of his life crossing the country on trains. So I asked him if he were my age again and could go any place. Where you'd most like to go? To school. His answer sent me in a different direction. And it is one of the main reasons I'm graduating today. Thank you. Learning. It's the smart thing to do. A message from the Church of Jesus Christ. Christ of Latter-day Saints. Hi, we're back. My guest is, of course, Mr. Quentin Crisp, unique person and certainly a favorite here in New York. Why don't you tell us um, what happened after you left your home as a very young person when you moved to a succession of furnished rooms? Uh, how did you find yourself? How did you find your identity? How did you find your place in the world? Well, I didn't really have a place in the world in, in London or in England. I had to cling on. I had to take whatever I was given. I lived in whatever room I could find from which I was not evicted. I did whatever work I was offered, whether I was adequate to it or not. Mm -hmm. And I knew the people who could put up with the disgrace so that I just may do with my entire life when I lived in, in England. What disgrace is that? The disgrace of being effeminate. In other words, the disgrace that they might have felt in knowing you? Is that it? Yes. 
Uh, oh, we have to raise your consciousness. Anyway, um, do you uh, feel that you are somehow less than others because you are homosexual? Oh, yes. This I accept absolutely. I have no difficulty. I never, I never compare myself with other people. That's one of the fundamental mistakes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be as good as other people. What kept you going during all those years when you were ostracized? You didn't know that there would be a gay rights movement. You didn't know that others would one day not only accept you, but yearn to have you on their television shows, on, uh, in the theater, wherever. I know you've just done a film, which we'll get to later. Uh, you didn't know that your life would improve so much. What kept you going? What kept you from killing yourself or going insane? Well, uh, going insane is very difficult. Um, I don't know how people manage it. I've <laughs> never been able just to relinquish everything. I've always been conscious that I was still there and I ought to do something about my circumstances, however little it was. But I can't say that I had a plan of action. I moved from one disaster to another. So, but what kept you, what kept your will to live going? The moment you stepped outside your door, people stared and said awful things to you. How did you even go to the grocery store or to buy a newspaper? Well, it wasn't easy. And on days when you felt um, at a disadvantage, you, you didn't go out. You, you stayed at home and thought, no, I'd rather starve than put up with another minute. Mm -hmm. But on other days, you gathered yourself together. And, uh, and you brazened it out. And this was every time you stepped outside your door? Uh, in the beginning, after the Second World War, I never expected to be beaten up again. You still got pushed around and shouted at and so on. Why is it that people stopped bashing you after the Second World War? I don't quite know. During the war, of course, they were worried enough for themselves not to bother about me. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially when the bombardment came and the whole city shook with the bombardment. But after the war? After the war, somehow, I think their life was difficult and uh, they concentrated more on staying alive themselves than mm -hmm. they had. The whole system had been shaken so that I think it didn't seem as perfect as it had been, and therefore a few errors like myself were allowed. What uh, do you think will happen to the future of others like you? What do you think a young man today, say someone who's born today, what will his life be like 20 years from now or so? Well, I can't say what it will 20 years from now. Um, people tend to think that once you've won your freedom, that that's the way it will stay. Mm -hmm. This, of course, is not so. The persecution of the Jews in Russia has come and gone and come and gone again. So that what freedom you have, you have for today. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, at the present moment, the life of uh, young people, if they live in big cities, mm -hmm. they can be as uh, outlandish as they like. In fact, I live on 3rd Street and on 8th Street, which is called St. Mark's Place. Mm -hmm. There is nothing you could wear that would make you remarkable. There are men with rocking horse hairdos. What do you like think, this. excuse me, what do you think middle America would make of you? What do they make of you? Well, I've been to Iowa, mm -hmm. been to Iowa City. They handed me religious tracts as I went on to the stage, mm -hmm. and I read from them to the audience, and I undertook to try not to say anything shocking, and I didn't mention you-know-who. And as far as I know, nobody was shocked, but of course I don't know whether they In were. In other words, people were trying to proselytize, trying to convert you, trying to make you see, quote unquote, the error of your ways. That uh, possibly, thing. yes, possibly. Don't well, you feel outraged by that? Oh, no, no, that's their life and the way they see it, and they but want But their me. condescension towards others who don't choose to live as they do. Um... 
Well, no, I think if you have lived among people who have the same way of living as you do, and your parents and your grandparents have always lived in the same way, mm -hmm. it's, it's absolutely inevitable that you would think this is the way the world is. Mm -hmm. And when someone arrives who hasn't lived in this way and doesn't really even know how to live in this way. So you've got to convince people if you are... Excuse me, Mr. Chris, and we'll be right back. Believe me, I know how bad it feels when you think that you're not part of the crowd. But taking drugs to fill in, I'm too smart for that. choice. Take one hit and you'll do anything to cop more. Steal from your mama, lie, cheat on your homeboys. But hey, that's the price you pay when you deal with dudes like me. Now, some folks will tell you that I'm dealing in poison. But hey, do I look like the kind of guy that would do that to a kid like you? Yes! Lies beget lies. God, you sound like Mother. Well, she happens to be right. Lying is a vicious circle and there's no way out of it. One out of every five people who try cocaine get hooked. But that's not your problem. Or is it? I just missed the 845 to Springfield and was starting to think running away wasn't such a great idea after all. Then I saw him, Whistle Stop Willie. Rumor had it he'd been everywhere on trains. So I asked him if he were my age again and could go any place where he'd most like to go. To school. His answer sent me in a different direction and is one of the main reasons I'm graduating today. Learning, it's the smart thing to do from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Hi, we're back. My guest is Mr. Quentin Crisp and we were just discussing before the break how it is that today's young people don't have to face the struggles that people did when Mr. Chris was very young. Do you think that today's movement, gay movement, and general liberation for all sexual persuasions is, in a sense, your vindication? Oh, no. That would be to suggest that I had some influence upon it, which I did not. No, it has happened that sexual freedom has happened because money has fallen into the hands of the young. Mm -hmm. And the young have always wanted more sexual freedom than their parents thought was good for them. Mm -hmm. And now, because they are rich, they have power, and they have produced what I believe journalists call a sexual explosion. Mm -hmm. So if you can talk about sex in the end, when you run out of anything more to say about heterosexuality, mm -hmm. you start on kinky sex and you talk about that which, of course, was never mentioned when I was young. I never heard the word homosexual used till I was at least 18 or 19. Do you think that's one of the reasons why others may have disliked you, because you made them confront the issue of sexuality? I think they feared I might drag them down with me. You mean whatever it is that you're doing is so fabulous they'd want to get in on it and they don't want to like it? They don't want to... Um, uh, be smid. They couldn't know me because of the disgrace. They couldn't um, be in some way involved in it. Mm -hmm. Because others uh, might think that they were then doing what you right, were doing. That's right, yes. Oh, you see, see, it was never very manly men who were afraid to be seen with me because mm -hmm. they knew they were above reproach. Uh -huh. It was men who might be mistaken for uh -huh. effeminate people who were so worried. Uh -huh. So, 
you've noticed that, mm, of course, today's world is far different from the world of, say, 50 years ago. And you say that you don't feel that you had anything to do with changing it? No, I wouldn't say I changed it. I would say I now profit by the change. Mm -hmm. But don't you think that your example and your courage made it all right, not only for gays, but in a roundabout way for women, for the physically challenged, for everyone to Well, it would be hard to believe. I mean, I lived in England. I was totally unknown, except in the places where I lived. But you were... Well, didn't famous photographers photograph you during the 30s and everything? Well, one famous photographer called Mr. McBain, he photographed me. And, of course, we're speaking of a time when everybody was beautiful mm -hmm. because all negatives were glass mm -hmm. and therefore could be retouched. Now everybody is hideous because their negatives can't be retouched. Mm -hmm. But my point is, don't you think that you served as an example to others? when it came to your own personal freedom? You took the consequences and you survived to laugh another day. Well, I certainly did do that. It's hard to believe it really influenced anybody. I was, I was there and I was an example of the change. I was a personification of the change. But I can't say I created the change. No, but you were one of those who helped it along. You see, now I've gotten to America, um, I constantly have the feeling that everybody is my friend mm -hmm. because Americans are so friendly by nature. Mm -hmm. Whereas in England, you don't feel anyone is your friend. Really? Why is that? Well, the English are not a friendly people. Mm -hmm. uh, they resent anything in the nature of an intrusion. No stranger ever talks to you. In America, people tell you the story of their lives while standing at street corners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody talks to everybody. What future do you see for persons like yourself? Well, their life is now, I don't think it can get any easier. They really do as they please mm -hmm. in big cities. That's the trouble. Everything I say has to be modified by the fact I live in big cities. Mm -hmm. uh, whether I could carry on like this in the middle of a small country in town in Oklahoma, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I should think not. So, if you had one message to leave for posterity, can you uh, think of something to say to the people out there who might be interested in knowing your thoughts? I think you, everybody has to decide who he really is mm -hmm. and then find a way of doing it, being it, saying it, so that you end your life thinking what little I could do and say and be is mm -hmm. done. Crack is maybe the most dangerous thing you can do to your heart. When you do crack, what happens is these toxic chemicals rush through your lungs and then right into your bloodstream. The reaction is like so violent. Well, your heart just might not, just might not be able to take it. I do coke uh, so I can work longer. So I can earn more. So I can do more coke. So I can work longer. So I can earn more. So I can do more coke. So I can work longer. So I can earn more. So I can do more coke. So I can work Always chasing If you haven't talked to your kids about drugs, hey. make an appointment. Yo, mom, you want to see me? And if you don't know what to say, ask us. For a free parent's guide to drug prevention, call 1-800-624-0100.
Chris, it's Mom. Look, honey, I've got a lot of work to do, so I won't be home until late again. Just do the usual, you know, fix yourself a little something, anything you want. Oh, and I left some money for you on the counter. Use it for whatever you like. Now, Dad won't be home until Tuesday. He says hi. Oh, and somebody told me you quit soccer. Is anything wrong? Well, just leave me a note. I love you. Bye. Hi, we're back. My guest is Mr. Quentin Crisp. And I guess you could say that your message to the rest of us is, in essence, to thine own self be true. Yes, exactly. When you say anything which is about life and destiny and all that and stuff, you're only ever saying what has already been said. Mm -hmm. And I simply domesticate the philosophies of others. I try to find ways of telling people how to be true to themselves in ordinary, everyday circumstances. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what I have tried to do. I've tried to be exactly like myself all the time. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the consequences. Well, you have to do it regardless of the consequences, but what you must do is make sure that nobody thinks you're doing it in order to n annoy them. Mm -hmm. They must understand you're doing it because you cannot help it. This is the way you are, this is your destiny, mm -hmm. this is your nature. So you need two things, boundless self-confidence mm -hmm. and abject humility. And this I learned when I was a model in the art schools. Mm -hmm. You have to have the nerve to stand nearly naked in front of a lot of students, younger, bigger, bolder, and more beautiful than yourself, without thinking, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. But you also know that you are absolutely at their service. Mm -hmm. You are a thing put up in front of them. And that's how, why I could be a model, because I understood that. And why you could be yourself, really. Exactly. I see. Well, my guest has been Mr. Quentin Crisp, well-known author, television personality, theatrical personality, certainly a pioneer in the gay rights movement, and a symbol for everyone, gay or straight, um, regarding individuality and how to be oneself completely. Well, my name is Diana Montford. This has been the Diana Montford Show. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.